No stack is better than the infrastructure you deploy it on. AWS launched all the way back in 2006, and with it came the second generation of developer tools around infrastructure deployment and scale. It had never been easier to get your applications out to users, be it one or one million. Sadly, it feels awful to use. It's time for the third generation of infrastructure tooling. This is the infrastructure I use in my 2023 stack. I'm gonna be real with y'all. I have companies hitting me up every day asking me to show their stuff, and I don't want to. I don't want to recommend tools I don't use or see myself using. That's why I created the T3 Deployment Partner Program. This is a new type of sponsorship I wanted to try out. I chose to reach out to the companies that build the infra I use every day so that our sponsorships and our channel support can come from the companies I trust, not whoever was willing to pay the most. I'm really proud of the companies that I chose to put here. These companies are not sponsoring this video, but they are sponsoring the channel. And I wanted to disclose that before going any further. The reason I picked these four companies is they understand us and the experience I've had building on top of their infrastructure has been the best developer experience I have ever had. The first company is the core to our serverless future. I don't want to think about Kubernetes anymore. I firmly believe things like Terraform are abstraction leaks in the majority of applications. We shouldn't be thinking about what servers are running our code. We should be thinking about our code and making sure it runs. And when you stop thinking about servers and you start thinking in functions, you just worry about the inputs and the outputs, stuff gets a lot easier. And this is why Vercel is the core of almost every application I ship. I cannot remember the last time I deployed something that like, served a request or ran code that wasn't running on Vercel. You can deploy to serverless functions via Lambda the traditional way you want on AWS, but instead of going through 500 steps every time, you literally go to Vercel, you sign it with GitHub, you click the GitHub repo, and you're done. It auto configures and does everything you need it to do. If you want to deploy on the edge using Cloudflare, you can do that as well. They even handle things like the CDN for you. All of the things that run code but aren't servers, Vercel has you covered. It's a really good experience, even if you're not using TypeScript. And honestly, I cannot imagine deploying without Vercel at this point. But when you're building serverless, you still need some things to be persistent. Just because the server shuts down doesn't mean the data should go away too. So how do I deal with that? Where do I store all my data? Store pretty much everything at this point in planet scale. It is incredible how much planet scale has simplified my life. I was a chronic database hopper moving from plan to plan, from service to service. In one year, I hopped from worker KV to Heroku Postgres to Postgres on AWS all the way over to planet scale. And it was weird moving to MySQL. I'll admit it seemed scary, but man, never worrying about your databases is worth it. Planet Scale's skill is in two particular areas. The scale, meaning you'll never worry about your reads or writes again. And the integrations. This is stuff like how they handle migrations. It's less like a traditional writing some SQL and hoping it does the right thing. And much more like a Git workflow where every developer can have their own branch, make changes to the schema, and then make a deploy request similar to a pull request to actually merge those changes into the production database. Planet Scale even has an NPM package that lets you connect to their HTTP endpoint, so you don't need to make a SQL connection to get your data. That means you can run on things like the edge and have instantaneous responses rather than waiting a whole bunch of time for a connection to be formed, get the data, and then return it to you. It is so much easier to build in the environments we build in when you adopt tools like Planet Scale. I cannot recommend it highly enough. But what about when things go wrong? Obviously, all this stuff is great when everything works, but not everything works all of the time. How do you deal with outages? Where do you go to know what went wrong and why? Well, thankfully, I have one central logging tool that catches almost everything that goes wrong. That tool is Axiom. If you're already on Vercel, it's literally two clicks to integrate, and now all of your logs will go straight to Axiom's dashboard. It is so much easier to search for things there, find errors, figure out what happened where, when, and why. It is the best search I've ever used. It's incredible how much effort they put into the search on their platform. At Ping, we target a seven minute response time from when a bug is reported to when it's fixed in production. Without Axiom, that wouldn't be possible. They also really deeply understand our needs as Next.js users. They even provide a Next package for their client side logging so that it doesn't get blocked by things like uBlock or ad blockers. Such cool tech, cannot recommend them highly enough. If you're deploying on serverless and you care about the things you're deploying, you need something like Axiom to know when things go wrong. But what about crons? What about caches? What about events? What about message queues? What about rate limiting? What about all the other things you need servers for? Conveniently, 
there's actually one company that provides solutions for all of that. And that company is Upstash. Upstash started with making Redis easier. Redis is an in-memory database focused on being as fast as possible to get data back to you. It's phenomenal for things like caching. Redis also kind of sucked to deploy and sucked even harder to work with in things like TypeScript. Upstash started by solving that. Redis is an incredible technology, but it's not the easiest thing to use. This goes for a lot of the stuff that Upstash helps you with, like Kafka and Crons. As great as these things are, they're annoying to set up and they're basically impossible to work with in TypeScript serverless environments. Until now, Upstash provides super helpful NPM packages as well as infrastructure to do everything from rate limiting your services based on an IP address to sending cron jobs dynamically when users do specific things on your serverless functions to just putting a cache in front of something or obviously events as well. It's really nice to have queues sometimes. And man, if it wasn't for Upstash, I'd probably be stuck in AWS. And honestly, most of my infrastructure regret last year, like the decisions I made that were the most painful, were things I should have used Upstash for, but chose to use AWS for because it felt like the professional solution. That is always a mistake. Upstash has proven time and time again to be the best way for us to do the non-serverless things in our serverless applications. And I'm excited to be using them in my 2023 stack every single day. Yo, sorry for the interruption, but we have a last minute addition to the T3 Deploy Partners. I couldn't be more excited to say that Clerk is joining us as well. As you all know, I've recommended rolling your own off for a while, but man, I've just run into problem after problem, be it preview deploys or React Native support, that has made Clerk the obvious choice. And after I started using it for more mobile stuff, and in particular, Create T3 Turbo, check out the video that I linked in the description for more on that, I've just been blown away with how good the experience is using Clerk. If you're using Next.js and you're deploying on things like Vercel, I'm hard pressed to recommend any other solution. And it's really awesome that they've joined us in this program. Huge shout out to clerk.dev. They are my auth provider of choice. Oh, also merch, shop at t3.gg, check it out. There's a bunch of other companies that we're using and I'll throw all their logos around here, but no one of these is as essential as the four I just listed. And as much as I love all of them, I could swap most of them out with something else, except for GitHub. Uh, that could change someday though, right? Right? Anyways, that's my 2023 infra. So if you want to learn more about what I'm shipping and how I build it, definitely check those out. Thank you as always. Peace, nerds.